Valentina is one of the most popular, delicious, and iconic hot sauces from Mexico. Mm -hmm. However, many people don't know that it was named after a cool, brave, and badass cross-dressing soldier who fought against Porfirio Diaz's troops in 1910. If you would like to know more about this amazing woman, which some people like to call the Mexican Mulan, keep watching. A man by the name of Manuel Maciel Mendez was happy to hear that when a teacher asked her elementary students to name the state she was pointing at, the kids responded, Valentina. There is no Mexican state by that name, but since the teacher was pointing at Jalisco, which is part of the logo of the Valentina hot sauce, the kids naturally assume that the state was called Valentina. That's because in Mexico, we learn about hot sauces first and tedious geography later. Manuel told a Mexican newspaper that his father, Don Manuel Maciel Sr., the founder of the Tamasula group, would have been very excited to hear that children knew his products especially the one that he named after an obscure historical figure. And that's because Don Manuel, who started his business in the tiny town of Tamasula de Gordiano, in the southern state of Jalisco, named his signature hot sauce after Valentina Ramirez Avitia, a woman he admired for being brava, meaning fierce, brave, and courageous. Side note, in Mexico, the feminine brava is also a synonym for mouth-scorching spiciness. So who was Valentina? Let's look at some fun facts and also some sad facts. Valentina was born in 1893 in El Norotal, a very remote village in the state of Durango. She was barely a teenager when her father decided to join a group of insurgents, but he passed away. Just like her dad, Valentina also wanted to fight Porfirio Diaz's forces since the dictator had been ruling Mexico for decades, but women were not allowed to join the military. After carefully studying the way her brothers would walk, sit, salute, and ride horses, Valentina went on with her plan. As she stated, I joined the ranks of General Iturbide in November of 1910, but dressed as a man and under the name Juan Ramirez. In the Chinese story, Mulan also takes the place of her father as a soldier, which is why a lot of history buffs refer to Valentina as the Mexican Mulan, but also Norotal's lioness, since the Duranguense possessed flashing tactical movements and would crouch in the gloom of the night like a lioness when she catches her prey. Valentina was found out when her horse accidentally knocked off her hat. A fellow soldier was standing by and he noticed her long braided hair. So after being detained and questioned, Juan shocked her fellow troops when they realized she was actually Valentina. They were especially surprised because at that point the lioness had achieved the rank of lieutenant only to be immediately discharged as she told a reporter in 1969. He thought I was a spy, but after questioning, the general was surprised to learn I'm a woman, and he congratulated me. He also dismissed me, because, like General Villa, he did not admit women in his ranks. From then on, all smell of gunpowder would cease for me. Valentina, Valentina, yo te quisiera Valentina was admirably discharged, but without a pension. Her chauvinist brothers never forgave the lioness because they expected her to submissively stay home and take care of her family, not fight for her ideals. You know, Mexican machismo, the old faithful. The soldier then moved to Sinaloa, where she married a colonel, and just when life seemed to be looking up, he passed away two years later. Destitute, Valentina was forced to work as a housekeeper. Years later, in the 1960s, she was hit by a car in the city of Novolato, which left her crippled. By then, Valentina had been living in a shack, but she was moved to an old folks home. Two days later, she escaped and said that she would rather die next to her dogs and not as a prisoner. Back in her shack, she supposedly lit various candles each night, one for each member of her family. And in 1979, it's believed that one of her dogs knocked over a candle, which set her home on fire. Having suffered extreme burns, Valentina was rushed to a hospital in Culiacán, where she died on April 4th at 86 years old. Yes, Valentina's story is sad, tragic, and heartbreaking, which is why you should consider honoring the woman in your own way. I personally think Mexican school children have the right idea, and we should simply rename Jalisco, which means Sandy Plays, to Valentina. It's so much cooler. And that's it for this video. Check out The Americano on social media for more content. Ciao.
a ingresar las filas del ar. 